This is uh, the second time Caroline and I have spoken to your industry in recent weeks about a DOE loan. Uh, my question is really how much of a stopgap this is, right? Because you take scrap and you recycle it, but there isn't that much scrap around. And so I'm wondering how much you actually needed this cash to keep operations going as this industry ramps up. Yeah, great to be on, Ed. And look, I think that's a bit of a, a misnomer, if not actually a big misnomer. So life cycle, we're a commercial business today. Think of it as urban mining. We purely focus on lithium batteries. Like we today have four commercially operational sites that are full of lithium batteries of all types. So think of scrap from the making of batteries, but even energy storage systems, EV batteries, EV batteries, for example, from recalls. I think people don't realize that as they go on the road, there's a lot more batteries need to be recycled and, of course, consumer electronics. So we continue to grow. I think we've you know, more than doubled our feed intake over the last year. So I think it's a commonly said thing uh, about there being a lack of feed, but we have continued to see a very rapid growth through our customer base. If the scrap is not so limited, how high are the bids that you're having to put in to obtain it? I'm kind of interested, RJ, to get into the economics of the business right now rather than in the future when more scrap's available. Sure. So take a step back. So there's really two parts of recycling. It's often like grouped into one, but there's really pre-processing and post-processing. Pre-processing is where you take the scrap in or the batteries, go to an intermediate product. Post-processing is to a finished chemical or, or good. So we do both. That's our spoken hub model, reverse logistics. You know, through the first step, I'd say, look, that part, you know, we have a lot of advantages there that helps to secure the feed. That's been a very important part of our journey. But the real margin at the end of the day is through the second step, through the making of the battery grade lithium nickel cobalt. That's what we're gonna be doing at our Rochester hub facility in, in Rochester, New York. That's what this conditional commitment is for, the loan, the $375 million loan. So look, I say over our next one, two year journey, that's a key inflection point for us mm. to eke out that lithium value, that nickel value, that cobalt value in the batteries. Just to remind us, of course, all of this, the focus, the financing coming from the US government is to ensure that we have a more secure supply chain right here in the United States. How much will you be supplying? Yeah, so if you think about it in EV terms, we're over 200,000 EVs equivalent of materials that we'll be producing at the back end, if not more. We'll be producing another fact, which will help to understand, we'll be producing up to 8,500 tons of lithium carbon a year. That may not mean much to folks, no. but in the United States today, the production is 5,000 tons. So I don't think many people have clued in that we'll actually be the largest source of lithium production in the United States, albeit from recycling, as opposed to mining. Mining, of course, is an important part of the equation, but it's inherently a long lead. So one of the key advantages we can deliver is a faster time to market. And to your perspective, the customer base, is it largely EVs? Is it storage? Who are we going to be really seeing you mm. supply to? Yeah, so predominantly EVs, for sure. Uh, you know, as Ed was opening in the beginning there, as you make batteries, it's not perfect. It turns level scrap. LG is one of the largest EV manufacturers, uh, battery manufacturers in the world. They're an investor and customer of Lifecycle. So that's a great, you know, steady state growing, you know, base of us for feed. But interestingly, we've seen a lot of other segments grow. For example, energy storage, residential utility. So each of the segments we're in, all types of lithium batteries continue to have, you know, significant growth.